my five-month depression nap. It's over. Barely four videos released in the last six months. All right, lads. Legitimus is here to teach data packs and be handsome. And he's all out of data packs. All right. Where to begin? Logbog, let's make a mini game server. Didn't we do that back in like 2015? Yes, we did, but this time it's better. Plugins, Logbog. Custom plugins. A resource pack? We're finna be the next Hypixel. Uh, uh, that sounds great and all, but I don't know how to do any of that. That's perfect. Now, the next bit is where you meet my other collaborator, Peej. You probably won't be hearing from him too much, though. You'll, you'll see why. Peej! Wanna help make a minigame server? Awesome. Logbog's helping. Hey, Remy, I've been thinking. I've got an old Raspberry Pi lying around. Why don't we just use that to host our server? On a microcomputer? Yeah, check it out. I just posted my server on all the serverless websites. Let's see how many players I can get. Logbog, why don't we just use Server Pro? This video's sponsor. What video? Server Pro offers virtual private servers for gaming. With just one VPS, you can switch between any game at any time for free, or even host multiple games on one VPS. Ooh. They've got a slick, easy to use control panel with a one click installer for many games, including Minecraft. All Server Pro VPSs even come with DDoS protection. Hey, look at that. People are joining my server. Hey, say that about DDoS protection? Logbark, don't tell me you're hosting that server on your personal internet. <laughs> you should have used Server Pro! Don't be like Logbog. Click the link in the description to try Server Pro for yourself. Hello? Welp, he's dead. I have always wanted to start my own minigame server. Ever since Jesper the End server way back in Minecraft 1.8, it has been a dream of mine to run my own. I actually did run one way back then with my late friend Logbog. It was all done in vanilla with command blocks, which uh, it was not so easy to do back in the day, no, no. It averaged about two players, me and Logbog. No, I cannot keep using this. I am at severe risk of overusing this effect. Now, things are different. I can write code, I can set up a proper backend, I can grow facial hair, and I've got an audience. You guys. Which means if I actually ever get this server running, people might actually play on it. There is no love stronger than that between a parent and a child. And if that's true, then my child is Kotlin. Father. Those of you familiar with the Java edition of Minecraft might be aware that it's written in Java. Java is the worst programming language ever conceived. There is so much boilerplate, so much copy-paste madness, that just trying to write a class feels like doing a full finger workout. Kotlin, on the other hand, is like a cool breeze. Slick, modern programming features. Far less boilerplate code, and best of all, it compiles into Java. Which means I can write, like, Minecraft plugins and stuff in it. Hell yeah. So, I've had this really stupid idea bouncing around in my head like a DVD screensaver for months, until just recently, it hit the corner. Okay, hear me out. Evil Bed Wars. It's like your generic Bed Wars minigame, but you can, like, trade health for stuff and make packs with demons. Doesn't that sound hilarious? It, yeah, sounds good to me. Tell me, I'm fine. Alright, the boys are roaring and ready to go. 
Now all we have to do is set up our IDEs so that we can make plugins. This is complicated, but fortunately for me, several moons ago, I wrote myself a guide after it took me right around six hours to set it up the first time. All you have to do is update Java to open JDK Smile, you're finished. Since we wanted to feel like real developers, we set up repositories on GitHub for each of the plugins we made. They're private, of course. Don't want anybody stealing our flawless code. 12.39 p.m. Removed seemingly unnecessary code from the world reload script. 10.15 p.m. Re-added seemingly useless code. Anyway, if we're making evil bedwars as our first minigame, what we have to do is make regular bedwars and then sprinkle the evil on top like cumin in any otherwise good food. So me, Paige, and Logbug got straight to work. How do I register an event? String... question mark? What do you mean, no such method error? I'm a fraud! I don't know Kotlin, I don't know Spigot, I, I've never even played Minecraft! Logbug, don't worry, I'm sure it can't be that bad. Is that an intero bang? Look, Logbug, I've got something for you to work on. We need to save player data somehow. Stats, inventory, items, stuff like that. We need like a, a big spreadsheet, but better. So, a database? Yeah. You've used SQL and stuff before. Can you be in charge of that? Sure. Say, do you want to have any input on how I designed the schema? Uh, what is a schema exactly? Schema D's nuts! It's done. Ooh, heck! It's how many minutes into the video and I haven't even shown any gameplay yet? Ooh, me and Peach just got this very basic version of the game done. Peach whipped up the map, and I got the very basic mechanics in place. Come play Bed War. We have player spawners, which don't stop players from respawning when they break. Friendly fire. This thing, which spawns blocks forever. Diamond pickaxe, which you have to give yourself using commands. You can even reset the map by turning off autosaves and then crashing the server. We did one playtest of that version of the game. It worked! Kind of. It's far from done here, so let's teleport forward a few days and see what's changed. There is now a working shop. That's right, the whole thing, it just works. Also, we got rid of that grody old block generator and replaced it with a sleek, new, rusty saw blade for you to hurt yourself on. Now, lads, already with the small amount of testing we've done, some small issues have arisen with our two currencies. One is that the optimal gameplay loop seems to be spending all your health at the saw, dumping all that blood in a chest, and then jumping into the void to respawn with full health and do it all over again. This is not a fun game loop, and really feels more like an exploit than anything else. I haven't tried anything to fix this just yet, but if you have any cool ideas, please let me know. Second is with max health. By its very nature, you start with a bunch of it, which means that you can just immediately rush a diamond sword and potions, or diamond armor and ender pearls. This could be really bad if not balanced properly. I did end up moving obsidian to the middle at the altar because otherwise people would just spend all their health on obsidian defenses right at the start and slow the game way down. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention, on the diagonals between bases there are these crystals that charge up over time. If you mine them when they're fully charged, you will get an additional two or so max health. It's at this point in development that we realized our current map was trash. It's too goddamn small. Bedwars maps need some nothing to fill the spaces between bases. Nothing. Air. Void. Giant goddamn temple. Skull. Hand. 
Games. Here at Legitimus Incorporated, we're dedicated to providing the highest quality maps for our players. That means features like giant shop hole with convenient attached saw pit, carefully arranged colors for maximum clarity and aesthetics, red and green, they sure are seen, purple and magenta, how delightful. So come on down to Shrine. That, that, that's what the map is called. While I was at it, I made a nice sidebar that I stole directly from Hypixel with almost no changes. We'll fix it later. I also added some important but subtle features like not being able to block off your own spawn or build ridiculously far out of bounds. Did just realize though that with Elytra and Jump Boost, you can just jump on top of the temple. We'll fix it in the next episode.